you guys might be wondering, what the hell is this thing on my chest? This, ladies and gentlemen, is my underwater housing. It's the underwater housing made by Sea Frogs for the Sony A1. And because the Sony A1 and the A7 IV share the same camera body, it's also made for the A7 IV as well. And we've got the version one of the dome port right here, super small, super compact. And it's the setup that I've been using for the past couple of weeks, maybe about a month now. I've taken a couple trips up to Kauai, once with Kylie and once with my friends. I've brought this up both times and have been using it for the past couple of trips and been really loving the results that I get out of it. So even though I don't think I'm gonna be using this underwater housing tonight, I'm gonna to throw in some examples from the previous trips so that you guys can actually see the difference between each lens. So the setup that I usually travel with are these two cameras. I got the Sony A1 with the 16 to 35 f4 power zoom lens and the Sony a7 IV with the 20mm 1.8 for vlogging. Usually when it comes to underwater photography, I stick to this setup. I take the uh, vertical horizontal to vertical mounting plate off, but I keep the kit the same. The A1 with the 16 to, 16 to 35 is a very versatile focal range for underwater photography. You can get nice and wide at 16 millimeter and you can punch in nice and tight at 35 millimeter and you can even put the camera into crop mode and get it to something around like 50 millimeter. But sometimes there are those occasions where I want a different look. And there are also those times where I need to have one camera set up on the time lapse and one camera in the water. So this is what makes this housing setup so versatile for somebody like me who does a lot of content creation for YouTube, a lot of time lapses, a lot of underwater photography at the same time. Let's pretend I'm shooting with my girlfriend. I was here at this beach a couple of uh, weeks ago with Kylie, I had one camera set up on the time lapse with 16 to 35, but Kylie was in the water and wanted some underwater portraits at sunset. So I put the A7 IV in the underwater housing, slapped the 20 mil 1.8 on and put this guy into crop mode. And now I have a 30 millimeter 1.8. I get that shallow depth of the field. I can punch in a little tighter and I can, you know, take my shot with the time lapses as well as get shots that my girlfriend would enjoy as well. Also, other situations where the 16 35 is not the best lens of choice for underwater photography. Sometimes, like if you're shooting this beach, for example, there's a super gigantic mountain, but you also want a lot of space for your water in your foreground. So the 16 millimeter sometimes is just too tight to uh, capture this big, beautiful scene, both the landscape as well as the underwater stuff. And that's where this lens comes in, the 14 millimeter G Master lens, the 1.8 lens. This is my main astrophotography lens, but adds an extra two millimeters on the wide end when shooting underwater. I can include more in the frame. I can do ho better horizontal over-unders, and I can use the wide angle distortion even more on a 14 millimeter lens when shooting a big grand mountain like this in the frame. If I put it on the top 
half of my frame, that 14 millimeter wide angle distortion is gonna stretch that mountain to be super, super gigantic. that you can go from 14 millimeters on the super ultra wide lens, 16 to 35, and having that 21.8 is actually a really, really versatile combo, all while carrying one underwater housing setup. You don't have to switch ports, you don't have to switch underwater housings. I can shoot with the two camera bodies and those three lenses and get a variety of different results depending on what I'm feeling and what I'm shooting at the time. Another great thing that I love about the Seafrog housings is that they have this vacuum pump sealing system. So before every shoe, I untwist and I just quickly make sure and double check that all of the ports are sealed properly, that no dust has gotten in so I avoid any water leaks. This is just an extra step of confidence that you can bring all of your expensive camera gear into the water and not have to worry too much about it getting wet. In addition to that, Sea Frogs housings also come with a red light indicator if there's water inside of the housing. If it senses any moisture inside the housing, it's gonna beep really loud so that at that moment you know, oh man, I've got water in my system, I need to get out of the water and I gotta you know, try and salvage uh, my camera gear. And hopefully there isn't enough water that it's gonna fully destroy your camera gear. Um, but just in case, it's just another safety mechanism that's in there that I really appreciate and you don't get with a lot of other underwater housing brands. So yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I am really enjoying the Sony ecosystem is that all of their lenses are now becoming a lot more smaller, more compact, more portable. As I mentioned in my camera bag video, I'm trying to transition everything to be super small, super lightweight, super compact, and this just adds to that. I mean, this underwater housing setup is so much smaller and so much more versatile than my previous one. So yeah, if you have any of the Sony bodies, and you have the ability to purchase any, any of these small, compact, uh, full-frame lenses, then I would definitely encourage it because this is a really great and really versatile underwater setup that doesn't take up a lot of space, doesn't take up a lot of weight. You know, this is easily packable into a suitcase. And yeah, it just works, works really well. So yeah, just a quick one for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the underwater footage that I've gotten over the past couple of weeks. And I hope that this video was educational, but I'm gonna go shoot the rest of this sunset. And hopefully you guys see this vlog or this full travel vlog that I'm doing with my friends. One last travel trip before I start my ICU orientation uh, at the hospital. And then we say goodbye to traveling for at least a little bit of while. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. I'm sure it'll come out eventually. <laughs> But yeah, I gotta, I gotta get back to shooting this sunset here. Like and subscribe, do all that stuff.